Today, I'm going to be showing you the difference between these two Model 3 Tesla headlights. Uh, it appears that Tesla has already changed the design on these headlights as they are not the same already. So, what they've changed is on the underside of the light. So here, um, this is an older model. It has a bottom mounting bracket here. So now, on this newer one, you can see they have gotten rid of this mounting tab that exists here. And this one is smooth. Um, you can tell that it hasn't been broken. But what they have done now is included this bumper support bracket that this one doesn't have any mounting holes for. So it's interesting that they have already redesigned this headlight and I think that this is going to go unnoticed for a little bit, but these are probably not going to be interchangeable with each other. Um, the other mounting tabs do line up, so I don't know why they decided to get rid of this one and include the bumper support bracket instead, but that's what Tesla has done. So I don't know if you all have any information. Uh, maybe you can help identify the difference between the two because as far as I can see, there is no other difference between these lights. They still have the same outside mounting tab, the same inside mounting tab, which uh, you can see over here on this one, and that's it. So now the old one had three mounting tabs, The new headlight has two, two mounting tabs and a support bracket. So I find it interesting that they've decided to go this route, but that's what they've done. So now that I've shown you some physical differences, I'm going to kind of walk you through on this one. I'm gonna show you how to, to test it, to turn it on. I don't know how to turn everything on, and that is because Tesla only has one wire harness here, and it only has three prongs. So let me get you a close-up zoom in. So here we are. I've got my cell phone flashlight here, and you can see that there are only three prongs into this headlight to control all four lights, as well as the up-down leveling motion. So I'll go ahead and zoom out and kind of give you a walk around overview. So here is your turn signal LED and heat sink. And walk around here. So here's the one and only wire harness plug. This is where the inside mounting tab is normally at which would look like that. So now we'll turn it over and show you the bottom. So here along this back edge, there's just the one mounting tab here. And we can see here that this one's cracked and broken several places. But this was the older bottom mounting tab. And here is our main LED ballast and computer. And pop this up for you, and you can see that inside of there. Let's see, let's try this. So you see that there are quite a few wires running to this to this one control unit. So, I mean, outside of that, I don't really see anything else for controlling this light. So those three wire inputs will control the turn signal here, your high beams, your low beams, and your daytime running light LED down there, as well as the fan and the up-down motion of this particular headlight. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this set up. Uh, I'll show you how to turn on the low beam of this light, but that's all I've figured out so far. 
All right, so what I've done here is made a makeshift wire harness for this headlight. Like I said, I showed you earlier, there are three prongs in here. I just happen to have a connector big enough to encompass both prongs one and two in a single connector, and then I've got my ground connected to the, the third connector here. So it's important that you have power connected to jumpers one and two, because if you don't connect power to both at the same time, then the headlight will not turn on. Um, if you have power on connector one, nothing on connector two, and your ground on three, when you supply the power, then what will happen is you will hear the fan kick on and then it will immediately shut off. I assume that it has determined that there is a fault in the wiring and is just flat out shutting down to protect itself. But when you have power to lights one and two, you'll hear the fan come on and the main LED light come on. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go ahead and turn this light around and we'll go ahead and turn power on and I'll show you what happens. So now I'm gonna go ahead and turn power on and my wire is probably a little, nope, there it goes. Um, so you heard what happened is it immediately, it turned on the fan and whatever internal fault it detected shut the light off. You know, it didn't allow the LED to turn on. And then after a second, um, you know, my, my janky wire harness here um, probably connected the circuit and then, you know, now the fan is running as well as the, the low beam LED. All right, um, so now you saw that just the low beam turned on. We did not get high beam, we did not get the turn signal, and we did not get the daytime running light. So I'm not entirely sure how Tesla is communicating with their headlights um, via these just these three prongs. So there must be, my assumption is that there's a microcontroller or potentially even um, a Wi-Fi connector inside of the main control unit that communicates with the car. And once you've supplied power to it, it just talks to the main unit of the car via some wireless connection. Um, or there's another microcontroller that I'm missing that allows it to communicate and operate the various functions such as the, you know, the turn signal, the high beam, the daytime running light, the auto leveling, of the light and you know every combination therein of. So, you know, if you have any information, you know, I'm more than happy to to accept it. Um, or, you know, I'm trying to learn more about these and figure out how they work. But you know, I hope you found what I've presented to you useful. And you know, if you have any more information, please leave a comment and let me know. Thank you for watching.